enough, bud. Hi everyone, this is the video on the last bit from Unit 4. Here we're going to be focusing on chemical reactions and aqueous solutions. So we've already talked about the five main categories. We've talked about um, redox reactions. Now we're going to be focusing on precipitants, uh, precipitation reactions, how do you identify a precipitant, and acid-base reactions. So again, we are here for this video. Bear, dude, stop. Stop sawing. Stop like you're sawing. Okay, so reactions and aqueous solutions, we talked a little while ago or in a different video about how water is an important solvent and how it can stabilize our solutes that are either polar covalent compounds or ionic compounds. And so then we talked a little bit about those main categories of reactions and we talked about redox. We need to finish with these last three. What does it mean to be a precipitation reaction? What does it mean to be an acid-base reaction? And then a gas-evolving reaction. So precipitation reactions are double displacement or double replacement reactions where you have one of the product forming an insoluble solute. Now, this is not solid and solid. You have to have only aqueous, 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 and one solid on the right. Otherwise, it's, it just it doesn't count. So an example of this would be silver nitrate reacting with magnesium chloride to produce mag magnesium nitrate and silver chloride. Here, this is our precipitant. Um, it is going to form a precipitant because it's insoluble. And so the question is, well, how do you know what is soluble? And we're going to use our solubility rules. Now, our solubility rules are the, for me, I typically use these, these six rules. I feel like there's a ton of rules that we could say it worth something is partially soluble or slightly soluble. No. It either is or it isn't for our purposes, okay? And so for that, we're going to say nitrates, group 1 metals, ammonium, and acetate compounds are always soluble. There's nothing that can make these things come out of solution, okay? Chloride, bromide, and iodides, these are soluble, and then this arrow means unless paired with silver, mercury, or lead. If you have silver bromide, silver iodide, mercury chloride, these things are going to be insoluble and it will form a solid. Sulfates are soluble unless paired with barium, calcium, mercury, or lead. Mercury sulfate, calcium sulfate, these are insoluble compounds. Hydroxides, this one starts over here, you start on the end of the arrow, okay? Hydroxides are insoluble unless paired with barium, calcium, group 1 metals, or ammonium. Calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, these things are soluble. And then sulfides, carbonates, chromates, and phosphates um, typically are not sol soluble unless they're with group 1 metals or ammonium. So let's just look at these for a second and talk about the phase of matter. If it is soluble, it's going to be aqueous, meaning surrounded by water. If it's not soluble, it is going to be a solid, okay? So barium hydroxide. Well, if we go back to our rules, hydroxides are not soluble, oh, but barium can force it. It's kind of like having a wallflower at a party who wants to stand at the um, edge of the, the, the room, but their date forces them to socialize. So this is going to be an aqueous compound. Group 1 metal, this is aqueous. Sulfates, if you think about, uh, there it is, sulfates are soluble, up, but barium doesn't like to be soluble, so it'll force this to be a solid and precipitate out. 
group 1 metal, everything with group 1 metal is aqueous. So here's our solid, or our precipitate. Down here, iron acetate. Acetates are always soluble, so this is going to be an aqueous. Phosphoric acid. Mm. Phosphates aren't soluble. Group 1 metals kind of force the issue. Um, hydrogen isn't a metal though. Mm, I probably wouldn't be that tricky. Uh, I want you to know acids are soluble guys. We're just going to say that even though we haven't gotten there yet. They're soluble. Iron phosphate. Phosphates do not want to be soluble. Iron can't force the issue so this is going to be our solid. So here's another precipitate. And acetate and an acid, acetic acid here, it's got to be aqueous. Nitrates, group 1 metals, these are aqueous. Mercury chloride, this is solid. Chlorides are soluble, but once they mix with one of those, it's not going to be soluble anymore. KCl, this is group 1 metal, so it's aqueous. Mercury nitrate, nitrates are always soluble, so it's aqueous. So just for practice really quick, let's go through and classify these. This is compound, 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 compound. So this is double replacement. We do have a precipitant forming, so it's precipitate. Um, <laughs> then it is also, let's see, if we were to go through plus two, plus two, plus one. This, it's only precipitation. I don't see a gas forming. I don't see an acid and a base, so no. And we could do redox tables, but it's not redox. Here, this is compound, 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 so it's double replacement. It is also a precipitation. I have an acid but no base. Actually, there's two acids here. Um, so, not acid base. It's not a gas evolving. And we could again do tables, but it's not redox, so I won't take that time. Down here, this is double replacement. What am I touching to make that happen? Not gas evolving not acid base and it's not precipitation because there's only a solid on the left not on the right. So this is just double replacement nothing else. Now that's pretty much it for precipitation. All you have to do is identify it and you, to do that you do need to know those solubility rules. Uh, so for neutralization reactions, this is where you have an acid and a base reacting to form a salt and water. Okay, so your acid and your base must be on the left. Acid is something that you know how to name already. It's going to produce an H plus in solution or it can donate a proton. A base is something that can either give up an OH minus, so hydroxide to solution, or something like ammonia that can accept a proton. Now, acidic compounds have low pH, basic compounds have higher pH. And so we could really talk about the pH scale. Um, I know those of you that are going into nursing later really will del delve into this, which is why it's here. The idea is the lower you are on this pH scale, the more acidic you are. So like gastric acid, this is really, um, it's a log scale. So whatever your H plus concentration is, negative log of that gives you your pH. So down here, this is 0 0.1 molar to be a pH of 1. Orange juice is 0 0.001 molar acid, H plus, um, to give a pH of 3. Let's do something up here. Um, ammonia 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Is this molar H plus to give a pH of 11? It is a log scale. You go down by a factor of 10, your pH goes up by 1. Okay? And so when we're dealing with acids and bases, a lot of the time we think, oh golly, it's a pH of 5, that's really acidic. Well, yeah, I mean, it kind of is, but it's not enough to do true damage um, unless you just ignore all kinds of other things. So gastric acid is pH of 1. It has the ability to dissolve all kinds of stuff. Lemon juice and orange juice are just above that. Coffee is slightly acidic at pH 5. Urine has got a slight acidity, which has got a pH of close to 6, depending on the person, what they're eating, that kind of thing. Um, urine is really kind of, um, well, okay. So generally, people are always afraid of acids. Ooh, acids, you get that on your skin, it burns. Kind of. To me, I'm always much more scared of bases because a base, the way that a base works, you don't necessarily know that you have it on your skin until it is dissolved into your skin and started to do damage. By the time you feel it, it's kind of too late. You're going to have pain for a while. And if you think about like bleach or garlic or things that if you get that on your skin, you may not feel it, but it almost feels slippery when you wash your hands. That's the base part of the bleach that is washing your skin cells away. Um, you also know that it's really delved into your skin because your hands will smell like bleach for a while, a uh, couple of days usually. So that's, to me, bases are always more, much more scary. And so when you talk about things like, you know, um, jellyfish stings, for example, these are not acidic burns that you get. The welts that you get from this are actually alkaline or basic burns. And um, one of the easiest ways to neutralize that base is if you're at the beach and this happens, you pour a soda or something else that's slightly acidic. Um, and every once in a while on sitcoms, they try to, they have somebody pee on somebody else's leg because it's slightly acidic and it makes the burn go away. Um, disgusting, but makes for comedy for people, I guess. So anyway, uh, low pH is acid, high pH is base. So in terms of acid and strength, there are, depending on who you ask, five to six I'm sorry, six to seven strong acids. The strong acids are HCl, HBr, HI, perchloric, nitric, and sulfuric acids. These acids are going to completely dissociate. There's not going to be any molecule in water. It's going to be completely ionic. You're going to have, from this one, it would be two H pluses, oops, and your sulfate ion completely, 100% would be in this ionic form. Now, because they completely dissociate, they're strong electrolytes. Strong bases are group 1 metals with hydroxide. The end. Again, these completely dissociate, and so they're not going to be present as this molecule. They're going to be present as the ionic form. Um, so again, com completely dissociate, strong electrolytes. So Acid reacts with base to produce a salt and water. Here we have hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide. This is an acid. This is a base. This is a ionic compound, so it's salt and water. Now if we look, we wanted to completely classify this. This would be a double replacement reaction. It's not gas evolving. It is acid base. It is not precipitation, and I could do a table here, but it's not redox. So this is a double replacement reaction that's only acid base. Here's other examples of acid base, guys. Acetic acid, calcium hydroxide, reacting to produce calcium acetate, a salt, and water. Acid and base reacting to produce, well, this would be a salt and water elsewhere. Um, this is how these work. And so as long as you have an acid and a base on the left and an ionic compound and a, 
and water on the right, you end up getting uh, acid based here. Gas evolving reactions are going to have gas as a product. Now, I'm not really ridiculous. The only gases I want you to memorize are H2, O2, and CO2. If you see hydrogen, oxygen, or carbon dioxide, I really want you to know that those are going to be a gas form, okay? Now, um, generally, gas evolving reactions are going to be either combustion, single or double re single replacement, or even a decomp reaction. They can be redox, but you really have to check. So like for this, let's go ahead and fully characterize these. This is, go ahead and hit pause and try this, guys. Element, compound, compound element. This is single replacement. Here I can tell it's redox just because this is going to be plus one and this is going to be zero because hydrogen is by itself. So it's got to be redox. It's also gas evolving. Down here, this is decomposition. I have an oxygen, so it's got to be gas evolving. Oxygen here by itself is going to have zero. In a compound, it's minus two oxidation state, so it's also got to be redox. It's not acid-base though, guys, because there's no acid or no base. Now we did actually classify these two um, as redox on another slide, another video, um, so I'm not going to do it here, but I just wanted to show you a quick way of determining if it is or not. So for this unit, we talked about the five signs of chemical reaction. We talked about the how to classify them. We talked about electrolytes and solubility rules. We talked about water as a sol solvent, why it works and what it does. We talked about redox reactions, precipitation reactions, neutralization reactions, and gas evolving. So it's a lot of information, but let me know if you need anything.